talk today. So I'll start with a short intro about me. So I'm Chetan Raghu Prasad, and I do threat research with Cisco Talos. And my focus, uh, usually I, I like to work on crimeware and uh, ransomware uh, research, and I'm based in Singapore. So uh, today's talk, um, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, components about uh, SuperShell. And uh, we will see what the SuperShell is and uh, its functionalities, and also uh, how the actors are uh, using it to establish botnets that is widespread across multiple geographies that we saw during our research. And also, we'll see uh, which are the threat actors uh, who have already employed this or we see in their uh, infrastructure, which is uh, available. And after that, we I would like to share some of the interesting uh, observations, or I would say the overlaps that we saw with other um, attack framework that we uh, discovered in uh, 2022, and with the conclusion. So what the SuperShell is? SuperShell is actually an adversarial uh, uh, framework, which is publicly available, and the author has made it uh, public. That includes a C2 server, and it also has its uh, implants, and the administrative uh, panel of this uh, SuperShell C2 is developed in simplified Chinese. And if we see its, I mean, I, I would say uh, the features around it before diving into the functionalities. This uh, SuperShell C2, the author has um, built it on a flask, which is a microwave Python framework. And the author has made it uh, very simple for the operators to deploy with a one-click uh, Docker deployment, that it will uh, uh, create the SuperShell C2 environment. And um, also, its implants, it has capability to generate its implants as executable files and uh, dynamic uh, linking libraries that supports various operating systems that we'll see uh, more in detail uh, in a while that which are all the operating systems or architecture that it supports. And they use this uh, engine for uh, encryption on obfuscation of traffic and uh, uh, other activities like dynamic uh, IP ad address handling and basically to establish a resilient and stealth uh, communication with its uh, implants. And this is the admin panel, uh, which, which I would like to uh, show with a quick look, um, which is uh, with the simplified Chinese with all the options which it had when we took a look. And if we see um, specifically the functionality of SuperShell C2, that it can remotely uh, control uh, a machine and also execute uh, arbitrary commands on the remote machine that is connected to the C2. And also, it has a uh, capability to do file management tasks, like file creation, deletions, and file listing, and also do secure file copy on the remote machines. And then it can run uh, programs remotely on the machine by installing them as a service and also do remote code injections into a running process on a machine. And uh, another important thing which uh, I observed was that it create local uh, system SSH tunnel port forwarding feature it has. And also, it can establish reverse SSH uh, tunnels on the uh, machines that it has uh, connected to the C2. So this about the functionality of the C2. So now uh, we will see uh, how uh, it, how the operator can generate the implants, that is the implant generation uh, mechanism or the technique that they uh, include with this C2. So here, an operator that uh, who uses this C2 from the front end that they can give uh, specific uh, details about the file name, then a return address, uh, operating system, and uh, architecture that they can specify with the file type size and version. So these information, once they enter, that it will create a JSON file. 
and that will be placed in the uh, supershell uh, C2 directory. And after that, it invokes a, uh, an, uh, the client generation module. So this module, uh, uh, mainly that it parses all the uh, attributes that it has been uh, mentioned in the JSON file into the arguments of a Go compiler. And then it uh, uh, compiles the uh, binary and it will uh, be stored in the download folder. And while doing the compilation process, uh, the operator can choose whether they can, uh, they want it as an exe, dll, elf, or so uh, versions of the implants. And also they have an option to uh, pack the sample using UPX. In the while, we uh, saw one uh, URL that I would share uh, you in a while that how we found this and uh, we saw that um, an implant, a Windows implant was being downloaded from the server which starts from 43. And we saw about the implant generation mechanisms and now we will see some uh, details about the implants itself. So these uh, super shell uh, uh, implants, they are actually reverse SSH tools that uh, are written in uh, Golang, and uh, they are compatible with a variety of operating systems from Windows and have, uh, can uh, work on different flavors of Linux, and even for uh, Android, uh, Android phones that uh, runs the uh, versions of Linux. And then also uh, it can be compiled for different architectures, like i386, AMD, ARM, MISP64, with the different options that they have got. Then with the functionality of the implants, if we see, so it can provide a full remote control uh, access to the machine's uh, shell environment, and that can connect to the C2. And then uh, if we uh, see, uh, particularly with the Windows variant of uh, implants, it can enable command shell as well as uh, PowerShell access. And then with the Linux or other uh, uh, variants that support other flavors of Linux, that can give access to a couple of uh, shells that are available in the Linux. And it also has the capability to switch the uh, shell while it is operating. And then, it can configure SSH tunnels allowing the operator to perform like other uh, administrative tasks uh, on the remote machines. Along with that, it can also uh, facilitate some of the commands that are directed uh, by C2, including kill, connect, uh, exit, et cetera, that which uh, I've shown here. So then uh, in the while that I found a uh, uh, few uh, samples uh, which are uh, exe and elf that uh, you can see and uh, a snippet of the functions that it shows uh, which establish the reverse shell and also enable uh, local and remote port forwarding uh, in both of the versions. And also the commands to execute the functions um, in the implants which uh, I've seen with the samples uh, uh, in the wild. And in this sample, uh, let us just uh, focus on the IP address that uh, which is there, which I found in one of the functions that I'm gonna discuss uh, later while talking about the connection which it has. So then um, other um, examples that I've uh, seen in the wild uh, which uh, this super shell implants were uh, downloaded or uh, thank you were downloaded or it has uh, uh, delivered uh, onto the victim's machine one of it was uh, through a portable python executable file where i saw the uh, an attacker like the, uh, they were using this url uh, to uh, download and run the windows version of the super shell implant with a specific uh, Python request user agent and uh, with a file name that 00.ex is one of the examples which I saw. And at that time, this at uh, the time of my research, the server was live and I was able to get the implants uh, uh, downloaded during my research. 
And then uh, another example is through a partial stager. Uh, probably uh, it was uh, uh, through partial empire, that script that which has this uh, uh, download file function uh, through which uh, the attacker was downloading and uh, trying to uh, implant that on a victim's machine. And then uh, another example uh, I saw with an uh, encoded Metasploit uh, shellcode, where that shellcode uh, was trying to download it from one of the server and uh, implant that uh, uh, binary onto the victim's machine. <clears throat> so uh, while we do this research and uh, we saw this uh, uh, super shell C2 and uh, along with the other uh, observables that we identified, and then we pivoted uh, on uh, a specific um, a URL path as well as other indicators, which allowed us to discover during the time of our research, there were around 320 active uh, supershell C2s across multiple geographies. And predominantly, uh, it was more uh, in China. And apart from this, we also saw there were um, uh, multiple, or I would say, a large number of uh, machines that were communicating to uh, the C2 servers that we uh, found. And the victims were also uh, spread across multiple geographies in many countries, and we took some of the uh, details or the IP address that were communicating to the C2, and we saw that they were uh, related to the business verticals like telecommunication sector, education, technology, uh, e technology, e-commerce, and multimedia manufacture, and with uh, some limited uh, uh, details, uh, or I would say the limited uh, machines related to the government agencies. And here, um, interesting part is uh, in the telecommunication sector, we saw that uh, it is not only the endpoints, but we also uh, saw some of the um, devices that were uh, um, implemented as a network, or I would say the internet gateway for some of the universities were communicating to the supercell C2. And also we saw some examples uh, uh, with the ISPs or with the telecom uh, service provider machines and uh, uh, some were web servers which were ho hosting some uh, different applications for uh, various customers and some of the app servers that were specifically trying to do some uh, specific uh, uh, fun functionality or service. <clears throat> so with this uh, widespread um, victimology as well as um, uh, uh, the uh, business verticals which uh, were or I would say which have been uh, affected uh, by this uh, super shell C2. Along the lines, uh, uh, we also saw some of the um, mentions or the security uh, reports um, that were uh, published recently did mention about uh, the actors who have employed this super shell C2 in their attacks or they have seen in their infrastructure. And one of which is uh, the uh, record futures, inscript group researchers have mentioned that uh, Red Hotel uh, APT, a Chinese APT, that they were uh, using this uh, super shell C2 in their infrastructure along uh, with the other tools in their attacks. And recently, uh, Mandiant uh, researchers, with their moderate confidence, that they also called out uh, that UNC 1574 operating from China is also using this super shell C2. And another intrusion set, uh, REF0657. Uh, mentioned by Elastic researchers, uh, uh, seen that this supercell C2 was one of the mainstay in the attacks that they were uh, trying to target financial services in South Asia. So, apart from this, we have also seen some of the uh, indications um, that showed us uh, possibility of uh, a wider adoption of this uh, uh, C2 framework by Chinese-speaking threat actors. And let's see uh, what are those. So I didn't mention uh, to uh, remember the IP address of the server in the previous slide. So 
this, this server which starts from uh, 43, the IP address starting from 43, uh, what we discovered uh, from a sample in the wild. And when we took a closer look and research more on that, and we saw there was an active uh, Supershell uh, uh, C2 login page that was there on the server during the time of our research. And we also try to pivot on other uh, indicators that we observed around this uh, server, which allowed us to discover a few more uh, active servers that were running during that time. And most of them, they were uh, um, located in China, and uh, two of them we saw that uh, located in Japan. And another interesting observation um, in this uh, uh, research, while researching on this, we also saw there are uh, th uh, there were other tools that were running on these servers, including uh, Cobalt Strike beacons, and also an, uh, another tool called Asset Lighthouse System, which is uh, actually an asset reconnaissance lighthouse. And this asset reconnaissance uh, lighthouse, uh, which the actor uh, have renamed it as Asset Lighthouse System which is uh, actually an open source project uh, developed by Top End Competence uh, Center. This is an, uh, a recon tool actually, which we uh, try to see the functionalities after translating and then we realize that's a, a kind of recon tool and uh, it has also the capability to establish proxies and the other stuff, which we saw these tools that are that were also present on the uh, server that was running uh, Supershell C2. And another observation which we saw is majority of the uh, discovered uh, C2 servers were geographically located in China and some of these servers that uh, uh, the certificates that they were hosting was issued uh, with the location details as uh, Don Guang pro province in uh, Guangdong or uh, it has uh, Shanghai. Uh, these are the two locations uh, which we frequently saw in their certificates issuer details. And also, from one of the uh, server from the list that uh, I've showed in the previous slide, uh, with the server IP address starting from 121, and that was also hosting this asset lighthouse system along with the Supershell C2, had the same certificate uh, uh, details um, uh, which was uh, there in the previous server. And what this server disclosed uh, to me was after uh, I, um, I used this uh, asset lighthouse system uh, HTML response body hash, and uh, when I pivoted uh, that, and I saw there was another server uh, which was starting from 153 and which also had the certificate uh, details which we saw with the server 121. And another interesting fact which I saw is this server was also running another uh, Chinese attack framework called Alchemist C2 server. And this Alchemist uh, C2 server or the Alchemist attack framework was uh, discovered by Cisco Talos in 2022 and which was not open source, and we discovered that, and which also has uh, extensive uh, features like C2 and uh, implant generation capabilities, and they were written in Golang. And it has many features that an uh, attacker uh, can expect from the implants uh, to use it in their attacks. And here uh, is an example of the Alchemist C2 uh, index page, or I would say uh, the uh, features that it has, uh, which I would like to show here. And this one five, the server starting from 153 also had the, a certificate which is connected to the Alchemist C2 server, and which we uh, found during the time when we were researching Alchemist C2, was also uh, present on this server. And this is the login URL of the Alchemist C2, which has like slash one OGIN, is also an indicator or marker uh, to discover or track this uh, C2 servers. So this is one uh, connection which we saw while researching the Supershell C2 and the commonality which it had along with the other uh, tools which we discovered on the server uh, which was available and almost most of them uh, which had their administration uh, panel written in simplified Chinese. 
So this is one uh, observation that we saw. And uh, if you want to take a look more about this Alchemy C2 server, uh, you can uh, take a look at our blog that we had published earlier. So another uh, interesting observation um, which we saw uh, while researching on this Supershell C2 uh, framework and the development aspect of this C2 framework. So this author of the Supershell uh, C2, we found that they're not using uh, the standard libraries or package for their Flask container from alpinelinux.org. But they were using these packages from a mirrored uh, location or the mirrored site, mirrored server at this uh, domain called ustc.edu.cn, which is uh, uh, the mirror site of uh, University of Science and Technology of China. And also for resolving other uh, dependencies that it installs the requirements from the other open source uh, software mirrors that were located on this uh, uh, domain, which is uh, Xinhua University, which is a national public research university in Beijing, China. And the uh, uh, highlighting part here is, in 2022, we also discovered another uh, Chinese attack framework called Manchusaka, along uh, the lines with the alchemist. And before alchemist, we discovered this Manchusaka, which also had the similar capabilities like C2 implants and but the Manchusaka implants were written in uh, a Rust language and there were slight modifications uh, in the way it was developed. But from the functionality uh, perspective, it was almost um, uh, overlapping. And the Manchusaka developers were also using this uh, similar approach that they were not using the standard libraries, but instead they were using the libraries from uh, the mirror location uh, at usdc.edu.cn, which is also one of the overlap that we saw with the other uh, Chinese attack framework and this Manchusaka attack framework uh, that they have made it public. So there are several uh, publicly available uh, uh, attack framework uh, which has uh, admin panel with the simplified Chinese and has a couple of uh, overlaps or similarities with uh, way that it was developed or with the functionalities or uh, uh, with the actors or seen with the infrastructure uh, where the actors are using in combination to complement uh, uh, the, their uh, campaigns along with the other tools, for example, NPS or like fast reverse proxy. We are seeing these tools similarly uh, exist there. And this is just an example to show the uh, view of Manchusaka uh, UI and that uh, examples. And we also had uh, um, written a blog about Manchusaka, which uh, if you are interested, you can take a look at that later. So along these lines and uh, the takeaway from the today's talk is that the increase of this um, uh, availability of such uh, attack framework, uh, which has got extensive capabilities uh, right from Alchemist or Manchusaka and with the Supershell also, which we saw that their implants are, which has extensive uh, functionality and also it can be uh, generated for, or uh, generated to work on multiple operating systems or devices. And uh, uh, along with that, the authors of these uh, attack framework have uh, made it very easy uh, to implement or deploy on, in their infrastructure and also can easily generate the implant and instrument those implants uh, in their attack to establish a backdoor on the victim's um, uh, network and then uh, continue other uh, further attacks or the follow-on attacks uh, on top of it. So I would say, uh, and uh, request the defenders to be more diligent on these uh, type of uh, publicly available attack frameworks and also have a key, keen eye on uh, these aspects that these freely available framework are being employed by uh, the threat actors ranging from uh, APTs to uh, cyber criminals in their uh, attack chain. With that uh, being said, uh, I'm concluding my talk today, and uh, if you have any 
questions which we can discuss. I will try to answer. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the talk today. I'm curious at this point, do you know if the SNORT team has already published IDS signatures for this uh, framework? Yes, we oh, do have uh, SNORT signatures for the sample so far that we have uh, uh, discovered on this, um, especially Supershell C2. And for uh, Alchemists and Manchusaka, we have SNORTs and Clam AVs, everything is uh, there up to date. All right, cool, thanks. No worries. Thank you for the great talk. Um, just a quick question. You mentioned that they use Nginx for obfuscation and encryption. Can you please a bit elaborate what do they do, if you can? Yeah, uh, for uh, that aspect, uh, the usage of the Nginx for uh, obfuscation, that in detail, that have not gone through the uh, code or the algorithm that they're using to uh, encrypt the traffic that they uh, initiate or generate. But uh, I saw the package that they are using and they are calling it while they are uh, trying to establish the C2 uh, connections uh, with the implants. Like we implants, once it gets uh, connected or uh, establish the heartbeat uh, connection with the C2, and then the C2, while responding it back, like it generates uh, the functions where it calls the uh, Nginx package to collaborate with the connections there. Another question? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for your attention. <laughs>